The Creation of Adam, painted by Michelangelo in 1499, from Michelangelo by Estelle M. Hurl. Science has long been trying to solve the problem of the origin of the human race. Great books are published by learned men to explain how the being called man came to be what he is. But centuries before the beginnings of science, a wonderful poem was written on the same subject of the creation. This poem is called Genesis, that is, the birth or origin of things, and it forms a part of the first book of our Bible. Ever since it was written, it has been one of the sacred books of many people. This story of creation was once the favorite subject of artists. In the period before the invention of printing, people depended for their instruction upon pictures about as much as we now do upon books. Painters sometimes covered the walls and ceilings of churches with illustrations of the book of Genesis, transforming them into huge picture books from which the worshippers could learn the Bible stories which they were unable to read in books. Michelangelo was one of the last Italian painters to do this, and he profited by all the work that had been done before to make the grandest series of Genesis illustrations ever produced. It is from this series that our illustration is taken, representing the subject of the creation of man. The painter did not try to follow the text very literally. In the book of Genesis we read, And God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground, and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. Genesis chapter 1, verses 26 to 27. Chapter 2, verse 7. Michelangelo takes these words and expresses in his own way the supreme creative moment when man became a living soul. The man Adam lies on a jutting promontory of the newly made land. Though his body is formed, he lacks as yet the inner force to use it. He is not yet alive. The Creator is borne along on a swirling cloud of cherubs, moving forward through space like a rushing mighty wind. Perhaps the painter was thinking of the psalmist's beautiful description of God's coming. He rode upon a cherub and did fly. Yea, he did fly upon the wings of the wind. Psalm 18, verse 10. In his fatherly face is expressed the good purpose to create a son in his own image. The cherubic host accompanying him are full of joy and awe. We are reminded of that time of which the poet Milton wrote, When all the multitude of angels with a shout, loud as from numbers without number, sweet as from blessed voices, uttering joy. Heaven rung with jubilee, and loud hosannas filled the eternal regions. Paradise Lost, Book 3, Lines 344 to 349. The sign of the Almighty's creative power is the outstretched arm extending towards Adam with a superb gesture of command. As if in answer to the divine summons, the lifeless figure begins to stir, rising slowly to a sitting posture. The face turns towards the source of life as the flower turns towards the sun. The eyes are lifted to the creators with a wistful yearning. It is the look we sometimes see in the eyes of a woodland creature appealing for mercy. It is such a look as might belong to the imaginary being of the Greek mythology, the fawn, half beast, half human. Thus Adam, still but half created, begins to feel the thrill of life in his members and is aroused to action. He lifts his hand to meet the Creator's outstretched finger. The current of life is established, the vital spark is communicated, and in another moment Adam will rise in his full dignity as a human soul. This picture was painted long before there was any knowledge of electricity, of electric sparks and electric currents. Yet if we did not know otherwise, we might fancy that Michelangelo had some of these wonderful ideas of modern science in mind as the symbols of the great thoughts he was trying to express. The picture suggests to our latter-day scientific imagination that God's currents of power move as silently, as swiftly, as invisibly and mysteriously as the currents of electricity. The painter meant to show that the work of creation was not a mechanical effort of the Almighty, but that with him a gesture, a word, even a thought brings something into being. The series of which this picture forms a part is painted in fresco on the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel in the Pope's Palace of the Vatican, Rome.